Come one, come all, and gather round for episode number 28 of the TW Tomato Way Challenge Run. This is the first of the two-night pay-per-view extravaganza here for the month of June 2020. As we start with the red brand, Monday Night Raw, and their pay-per-view extravaganza known as Vengeance. Without any further ado, let us jump straight into the show. We start on the kickoff show in an absolutely banging 70 match. Austin Fury defeats Rey Mysterio in 16 minutes and 13 seconds with the unproven cutter. Rey Mysterio gets a 72, Austin Fury with a 59. Um, I did actually, in this meantime, because I, it's been a couple of days since I've actually done one of these, because I had a lot pre-recorded. So, in that time, I have actually gone through and not fixed, but mended pretty much the whole roster's finishes. So, now they will all hopefully make sense. No more... Um, shining with flying cross bodies, no more just top rope splashes, no more pedigrees from Seth Rollins. And the unproven cutter here defeats Rey Mysterio for Austin Theory on the kickoff show at Vengeance. The show starts off with a 54, the actual show that is. And it's the women's tag team championship women's tag team championship match. The Kabuki Warriors defeat Sugar Rush. In 1436, Asuka submits Zaya Brookside with the Asuka lock, and they make defence number three of the women's tag team titles. Candy Flock is a 28, Zaya 30, Garvey 57, Asuka 57. No, 75 even, not 57. And the Kabuki Warriors win here, and they will go on to Judgment Day tomorrow night to face Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez for the women's tag team titles. <laughs> 62... <laughs> Samoa Joe defeats Jinder Mahal in 1304, chokes him out with the Coquina Clutch, and gets a big fat dial here on pay-per-view. Joe gets a 28, a 68. <laughs> I'm really not on it today. I don't know why. But only a snap into gear because this is vengeance. We need only the highest quality commentary for this pay-per-view. Samoa Joe defeats Jinder Mahal. Yep, 68 for Joe, 48 for Jinder. And a 62 for the match, which is pretty damn good. For a Jinder Mahal pay-per-view match. Backstage segment with Zelina Vega. Her and Santos Escobar and Angel Garza are hyping up Andrade. Ahead of his WWE title match in the main event here tonight. And she tells Escobar, look. I know we ordered you, we ordered you in here to be the hitman and take Drew McIntyre out. But the job is not done. We need Andrade to leave here with a WWE title. And he just asks, okay then, so what do you want me to do? Do you want me to come out with you? Do you want me to wait? And Zelina's like, no, I don't want you to come. I want you to be on hand, waiting in the back, ready for when we need to come out there. We, we, if we ever need you, then we'll give you the signal and you can come out. And it, Gaza's like, um, does that count for me too? And then Zelina's like, no, Gaza, you you stay back here. We don't we don't need you out there tonight. We have our we have our um our equalizer our Take it out if Andrade needs the help. And so he, he can take that quad. You, you you can have the night off. You can relax back here. So the plans seem to be falling into place for Zelina Vega to try and capture the championship for her man Andrade here tonight. Speaking of capturing championships, Ozzy Might, Brendan Vink and Shane Thorne defeat the Street Profits at 11.41. Brendan Vink defeats Angelo Dawkins with a lunch cutter. And Brendan Vink and Shane Fawn are your new Raw Tag Team Champions. 58 for Ford, 52 for Dawkins, 39 for Fawn, 36 for Vink. They're all Tag Team Specialists, so they get a boost for that. Match is a 50, which I think is the best for Aussie Might people. But we do have new Raw Tag Team Champions, and they celebrate with their championships in the ring. Thick boy Bronson Reed, of course, at ringside with them, ahead of his United States Championship match with Kevin Owens. Can Ozzy Might do the clean sweep and win all three of them leave with Championship Gold? They can't, but it's nothing to sneeze at because in 1246, Kevin Owens defeats Bronson Reed with a stunner to make defense number two of his United States Championship. 74 for Owens, 46 for Reed. Match gets a 71, which is. Very good outing for the Thick Boy here on pay-per-view. And probably actually could do better for him in the long run than <laughs> winning the titles in a 50 will do for Shane Fawn and Brendan Link. Our truth 
again. He's here in his 24-7 championship. And Charlie Caruso rolls him up again and wins the title. So she's now a two-time 24-7 champion. And our truth he thought you could trust Charlie. But turns out she was there waiting to pounce on him this whole time. <laughs> Shayna Baszler defeats Bianca Belair, 14-43. Submission with a career through the clutch to make defense number three of the Raw Women's title. 64 for Shayna, 38 for Bianca. Pretty good based on those two ratings. But Shayna Baszler's not finished here tonight. Because she grabs a microphone and she taps out Bianca Belair. Or passes her out, whatever. She's like, see, Bianca thought she was the baddest bitch here on Raw, but I've just made her choke, I've just choked her out, and now she can't even leave her under her own power. You see, there's no woman here on Raw that is badder than me, that is better than me, that is stronger than me, and no one on Raw that has the power to take this championship from me. And I dare you, I beg you, please, if you have any different opinions to that, if you disagree with what I'm saying, come down here and say it to me face to face. And no one comes out. And Shayna's like, yeah, figured. Before she, before music does hit. Familiar music. But music we haven't heard on Monday Night Raw in that month and a half. Two months-ish. The Queen is here. Fresh off losing her NXT Women's Championship. She's back on Monday Night Raw. And she's back in her queendom. To take what is hers. And quite frankly, Shayna, nothing she's seen from her impresses her. So it's great balls of fire. If you have the if you have the guts to back up what you're saying, face the queen, woman to woman, and see who the real woman, the real top woman on this brand really is. Shayna laughs at Charlotte and just leaves without giving her an answer. Seth Rollins promo. He's unhappy. Cause why, why, why would he not be? Why, why would Seth Rollins be happy? Um, well, he's happy for Austin Theory because he's his prodigal son. He won money in the bank and he defeated Red Mysterio here tonight. But he's told Alistair Black that Murphy and Ruby and Rakem aren't, aren't needed for his plans. So he tells the four of them, stay back here tonight. And Murphy's like, are you sure you want to do that, Seth? Do you really think you've got what it takes to beat Alistair Black without our help? And Seth says, for the greater good, buddy, I always have something up my sleeve. Nice. In a 69, Bobby Lashley defeats Ricochet in 1228, and he locks him in the full and he taps out. Ricochet gets a 63, Lashley a 66. That advances the VIP Nation story. And then after the match, MVP is cutting a promo. He says, wow, that was an impressive win by the almighty Bobby Lashley. This is proof that VIP Nation is the most dangerous force here on Monday Night Raw. And he goes to lock Lashley back in the full Nelson. And then Cedric Alexander comes out. And he says, well... Well, he doesn't, Cedric doesn't speak. MVP is like, well, since you're here, Cedric... How about a, a Shelton Benjamin's feeling in a good fighting mood? How about you humour him and you give him a match right now to test his skills? Prove how badass he really is. And of course Cedric accepts. And that match goes seven minutes. Shelton Benjamin defeats Cedric Alexander with the pay dirt. 51 for Cedric, 54 for Shelton. So a bit of an impromptu, just random match between these two and Shelton Benjamin gets the win. MVP grabs the mic, he's still not done. See, thou Shelton Benjamin has proven that everybody thought he was over the hill too, like Bobby Lashley. But he's got a victory over someone who's very much like a young Shelton Benjamin in, in Cedric Alexander. But you see, there's one more charismatic stud here, Apollo Crews. This man's also itching for a fight. So if anybody out there thinks they can kick Apollo Crews' ass, come out here and let us let it be known. Well, MVP didn't mince his words, but he should have made sure he was more careful in picking them. Because there's somebody back there that's always willing to kick some ass. And you may now throw him up. Because out comes only Lorcan. And he's ready to kick some ass. On Do He's on WWE Vengeance and he kicked ass. Throw him up. Apollo
part, he gives a very gutsy performance and he takes whatever Apollo dishes out to him and he fights back up, he fires up. He, t- he gets laid out with a big kick, he fires up. Big clothesline, he fires up. You can't seem to keep only Lorcan down. So in the end, Bobby Lashley has to get involved and hit him from behind and allow Apollo Crews to get a che- cheeky, dirty win over a very game only Lorcan who hopefully would... Hopefully we would have garnered some sympathy from how tough he was fighting against the system here. MVP's not finished though. He he's cutting a promo still. He's like, well, all three of us now have got weak victories on this pay per view. Bobby Lashley he defeated Ricochet. Shelton he defeated Cedric Alexander, and Apollo Crews he defeated that dastardly only Lorcan. Well, you see, I, I'm still here. I'm still a wrestling, and well, I, I I'm 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 in the bit of a fighting moon myself. So. One more time, anybody in the back there want to fight? And apparently nobody told MVP about um, the the tale of things that are coming in freeze because um, Ricochet, Cedric Alexander and Ray Lorcan very much came in a three. But then you may have wanted to leave it there and not push your luck because you never know who's coming out next. And unfortunately for MVP, he ran his mouth one too many times. The beast is here, and he's got anger in his eyes. He's staring a hole through Bobby Lashley. He storms to the ring. MVP tries to run away, but he gets decked with a big clothesline. And Lashley and Lesnar get into a hoss fight, start throwing punches at each other. Shelton and Apollo try to pull him off, but they get decked with big clotheslines and German suplexes too. And Lesnar... He gets Lashley up to the F5. He delivers a big F5 to him. And then he has he stalks him. He wants to deliver more damage to it, to Lashley. He takes the gloves off. And he gets free to li- deliver some punches to Bobby Lashley's head. But Apollo, Shelton and MVP pull him to safety. As the crowd boos. The Beast does not forget. And he's coming for Bobby Lashley. 81. Nice match. Seth Rollins and Alistair Black. Goes 21 minutes and 56 seconds. And it's very even back and forth because like we want to showcase Alistair Black on this sort of level. Again, I don't like normally having the main event guys being toe-to-toe even with people that aren't main event guys. But Black is somebody that you're going to want to make get to that level. So it's important to showcase that he can hang. And there are a lot of times when Seth looks like he's been beaten. And he's fighting from underneath, but he's got no backup because he told them all to stay behind. Seth goes for the stomp once. He gets he gets rolled out of the way rolled out of the way. And Arthur Black hits him with the black mass and he rolls to the outside. And Seth's sort of outside catching his breath. And you can see on his face that he's very overwhelmed. He doesn't know really what how he's gonna get out of this one. Then he stops. Stops worrying. He smiles, because there's always a plan with the Mind Light Messiah. And he starts grabbing his leg. And the referee has to, of course, check on him, because, oh shit, what if he's really injured? But that's when the referee gets distracted. And in behind Alistair Black slides Damien Priest, who lays Alistair Black out with the reckoning, and slides outside the ring and back through the crowd, Seth Rollins sees that the deed has been done. He wheels his way back into the ring and delivers a curb stomp to Alistair Black and pins him for the 1-2-3. So, it appears um, there may be another disciple in the ranks for the Church of Rollins and they've allowed him to score the victory here tonight. as evident by this segment of Damien Priest coming back out and falling to his knees with his arms out wide, pledging to Seth Rollins, his new leader, as Seth put his hand on his head to heal him. Okay, that's pretty fine. So basically, Andrade and Drew McIntyre, they go 21 minutes, 10 seconds. And they have this standard match, just your standard Andrade match. Um, versus Drew McIntyre, pay-per-view main event. 
and there'd be a hamlock DDT, and uh, Drew McIntyre would kick out. And then he'd hit Andrade with the Claymore. And then it would be a case of Zelina pulling him out, the referee out of the ring as he was counting the one, two. And then he pulls, she pulls the referee out to try and stop him. So Andrade doesn't kick out, he is down. But Zelina pulled him to safety. And of course the referee's now distracted. That's when we see Santos Escobar run out from behind and lay Drew McIntyre out with the Phantom Driver. And... Again, referee is now let into the ring. Another distraction. Basically the same finish as the last one. But Drew McIntyre kicks out. He doesn't stay down that easily. Selena's getting increasingly frustrated out on the on the outside. Drew Mc- and Andrade would hit the back elbow to Drew. And he'd sort of fall onto like the second rope as if he would landed for a 619. That's the sole position Drew forwards himself in after the back elbow. And the referee sort of escorting Escobar out of the ring at this point and checking on Andrade. Zelina would, she like she'd take one of the heels off. She'd go to try and jam it in Drew's eye. That's when Angel Garza would come out, and he'd be like, "What are you doing?" Or he'd come to check on Escobar and check on Zelina. He's she's like, well, "I told you to stay in the back. I told you to not come out here. This is none of your business. This is Andrade's match, not yours." A bit, a bit of a heated discussion, and then none but to Zelina because she was excited of looking at Garza. She would turn around go to swing the heel in Drew McIntyre's eye. But in the in the meantime, Drew is rolled out of the way and Andrade's looking out of the ring. He's checking on Selena and Garza at ringside. He takes the, the heel to the eye and turns around into a claymore. Escobar's distracted, Selena's distracted, Garza is distracted. And one, two, three, and Drew McIntyre retains the WWE Championship in a 80-rated match. Against Andrade. A raid pay per view. We increased popularity in 19 regions. I think that's one of the best shows of the series so far. But more importantly than what the game thinks is what you think of the show. So do let me know in the comments below what you think. And I'll see you next time for the Judgment Day pay per view. See you then.